this demonstration we're going to see how we can configure and use VMM to create and configure logical networks, IP pools, logical switches, native port profiles, port classifications. We then have a look at how we can associate these logical networks with our Hyper-V hosts. So what we get when we first install VMM, we get by default one logical network and as we can see here I've got external network, we have to have at least one to allow virtual machines to communicate with the outside world. What we use logical networks for is these are our set of logical network objects and what we use these for we can then model our network environment, create multiple logical networks and then associate them with one or more host groups. So for example we could create a primitive logical network, development logical network and a production logical network. And then when the administrators or application administrators deploy virtual machines and services they can then select the logical network without the need to understand the underlying network architecture. So what we're going to do here is we're now just going to create a new logical network for a datum. So in my wizard, I've come to fabric, come to networking, gone to logical networks, I'm now creating a new logical network. We're going to create this for a datum. So I've typed in datum UK, description is a datum London logical network. Select the option which describes this logical network, it's one connected network. As it says here, these are equivalent and routable to one another and these can be used as a single connect network. We'll allow new VM networks created on this logical network to use network virtualization for isolation or what we could do as well is we could create a VM network with the same name to allow virtual machines to access this logical network directly. As you can see this isn't a radio button so you can turn on both bits functionality. Or we can have a VLAN based independent network or a private VLAN based network. So what we'll do now, fill out this table, select next. Now what we need to do is we need to create some network sites. And the purpose of a network site, we're using these to associate subnets and VLANs with location or department. We then associate the sites with the logical network and assign the host group that can use the network site. So we'll select our add button. We'll allow all hosts to use this. We'll insert a row. And what we're going to do here, VLAN ID 0, fill out our subnet ID, which in my case is 192.168.1.0 slash 24. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this for Docklands. So, we'll fill in Docklands. Now what I want is I want two networks, or two network sites. So I'll click Add again. Again, similar sort of thing. We're going to go with all hosts. Insert a row. VLAN ID 0 again. And what we're going to do this time is going to be 192.168.2.0 slash 24. And we're going to associate this with Gatwick. Now that we've done all of that, select our next button. Select our finish button. Let's create our logical network. So just close down the job menu. And what we can see now is we've got a date UK fully compliant within our logical networks. Next thing we'll do here is we'll create some IP pools. And the whole purpose of an IP pool really is to allow VMM to be able to allocate and track IP addresses. So what we'll do here is we'll create an IP pool. Brings me into wizard. So we're going to call this one Docklands IP pool. Click on our little drop down here and to date UK. Select our next button. Specify our network site. Well, we've got Docklands here. And then select our next button. And now IP address range. So as we can see here, we're going to handle IP addresses from 192.168.1.1 all the way through to 254. That gives us 254 IP addresses. We can specify IP addresses reserved as well for load balancers as well. We're not going to bother at this point here. Select our next button. I'm just going to leave the default gateway blank. Same with DNS, same with WINS. And then what we'll do here is just select the finish button. Then what we need to do as well is we need to create another pool for um, our Gatwick site. So we'll do exactly the same thing, create IP pool. So again for Gatwick and again the date UK, select our next button. Network site is going to be Gatwick. We will use our existing network site, select next. 2.0 network and then all we'll do is just continue through here and we've now created another pool so close that down there next thing we'll create here is a port profile so we're going to create a Hyper-V port profile and the purpose of this is to allow me to specify or configure things like the load balancing algorithm and the teaming modes we've got two different types, we've got a virtual network adapter profile and we've also got the Hyper-V ones, our uplink ones so all we'll do here, come to create Come down here, click on our Hyper-V port profile, brings me into another wizard, so we'll just fill out the table. So we're going to call this a Datum UK uplink, we're going to go for an uplink port profile, just in the load balancing algorithm here, we've got the host default, we can go for a hashing algorithm, we've got multiple network adapters, we can be a sort of IP addresses, MAC addresses, we're going to go for Hyper-V port, 
not going to bother with the teaming mode, select my next button, under network configuration, select our two network sites, and we'll also as well enable Hyper-V network virtualization. So as it says here, it enables a Hyper-V network virtualization filter on host running 2012 only. Hyper-V network virtualization is always enabled on R2. Select our next button, select our finish button, and what we've done there is we've now created our uplink. And next thing we're going to create here is we're going to create a logical switch. For anybody that's a VMware person, think of these like disputed virtual switches. What we do is we create a switch and we dispute across multiple hosts. The advantage of that is when you have to configure one, we'll only have to configure multiple switches across multiple hosts. So in order to do that, we've got a little button here, create logical switch. So we'll select the next button. On the general page, we'll just fill out the table. So we're going to call this a datum UK, we're going to call it the datum production host logical switch. We're not going to enable single root IO virtualization purely because we know that doesn't really support it. Uh, as it says, we can only use this when a logical switch is created. And what we're doing here with server root IO virtualization is we're presenting a network adapter to multiple environments. So what we're going to do here is select our next button. Not going to bother changing any of the extensions. Select next. We need to associate this with an uplink, so let's just click our Add button. And we're going to go with our Datum UK uplink, which remember is used for our load balancing algorithm. We'll then select our Next button. Then we need to specify our virtual port. And what these give me is these just give me port classifications that we can use across multiple logical switches. So for example, medium bandwidth. So we'll just click Add. We'll just click Browse. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go for medium bandwidth, create our port classification, and then we'll just fill out this table. We'll resume that, we'll just click OK. So, as you can see, we can also create additional ones as well. I'm actually going to use the medium one. So, and we'll just select OK. We'll just select include a virtual network adapter as well, and we'll just have a look down here. We'll go with our medium bandwidth adapter and select OK. And we'll select our next button. And we'll select finish. And we've created our port classification and virtual NIC. Final thing to do now really is now just assign these logical switches to my Hyper V host. So all we're going to do here is we're now going to come in and assign this a datum network. So what we'll do here, we'll come up to servers, click all hosts. Next thing we're going to do here is we're just going to click LON host one. Then what we're going to do here is just go to the properties, come to our hardware, and then what we're looking for here is we're just looking for our network adapter, so we'll scroll this down, my physical network adapter, sitting down here. So what we'll do here, just under my logical networks, we'll select the datum, get a little message here before enabling logical networks for VLANs on this network adapter. Ensure there is at least one other network adapter available for communication between the host and the VMM server. Very happy with that. Click OK. Click OK. And what we've now done is we've now associated the logical switch with our Hyper-V host. So that's the end of this demonstration. So we create logical networks, we create our IP pools, create some logical switches. We've then created some port profiles for the uplinks for load balancing. We've then gone to our port classifications and specified the datum network is medium. That's the end of this demonstration. Thanks very much.